I'm John, this is Jean, and we're going to tell you a little bit about how to engage patients in diabetes. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, John. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about is, you know, after these morning sessions, um, I'm going to state the obvious for, uh, for particular reasons. We talk about behavior change. Uh, and that obvious statement is that compared to a lot of other models that, are, that we've experienced in our lives, especially in the last decade where transformation has occurred, healthcare is kind of behind the curve and very outdated, right? Banking has gone through a tremendous amount of change and has helped us change our behaviors and how we interact with banks. Airlines, the same way, how we change and how we've interacted with airlines has also changed, as well as how we navigate through anything, a city uh, going coast to coast. So we've enabled people to change their behaviors by creating these transformative digital models, which is interesting because when we look at healthcare, it's such a big, massive stage that we actually have to pick where we think we can have the most impact on people as we try and get them to change their behavior. So again, we're not really talking here about something that affects a few people like surgery. We'll never get digital health to get people to take their own appendix out, right? Mm. We're not going to do that, but we are gonna get people to really start behaving better and, take, and pay more attention and changing their behaviors around health. And there's a really important reason why. And that reason why is because as consumers, we're actually a big part of the problem. And I mean, not literally, but also figuratively, a very big part of this problem is that over the last decade and going into this next 25 years, our health has gotten worse as a society. And it's getting worse because what we're seeing from International Diabetes Foundation and others is that our health is declining to such a point that we're gonna see at least globally a 50% increase in the number of people who have diseases like type 2 diabetes. And that's a problem because when you look at what the CDC has been telling us for years is that 80% of all chronic conditions are due to lifestyle changes, the lifestyle problems that we have around diet and exercise, smoking and drinking. So our own behavior is causing health to have a problem. So at Wellsmith, we looked at this problem and figured out how do we actually create a model that's engaging enough for consumers to grab a hold of, but that also allows us to help consumers change their own behavior. And that's what we've done, and we've taken a look at those transformative models in airlines and in banking and in, in, in navigation and figured out what at the core allows people to make behavior changes as, as, as we're doing here in health. So what we did is we looked at those models and said, well, first of all, they were reimagining the experience mm -hmm. of that industry through the eyes of the consumer. And that's what we did first. Our team is a, just an amazing group of behavior specialists and consumer specialists. We actually put ourselves through a diabetes management class at Cone Health, our partner's uh, health system, to understand what it felt like. What it felt like to go into a room with a bunch of people who had just been diagnosed with diabetes, who had to sit through these, I mean, I'm telling you, they were informative, but it was just like going back to school and being in a lecture where the teacher read you the book, because that's what happened for nine hours over three weeks, is our instructor read us the book that was in our folder that we needed to take and then go live our life differently. And what we said was, not going to happen. Not when everything else that we're doing as consumers is so much easier to do, and it's app-based. So we decided to make this app, and we built it on that Waypoints model to say, what do I have to do today, right now, in order to make sure that my health gets a little bit better? So my app on my phone can tell me what my next step needs to be. Very simple, very me uh, memorable, very actionable. And we've designed that to be a consumer app, so you have a personalized care plan on your phone that tells you what you need to do moment by moment or day by day. And we've, we've instrumented people with a whole set of Bluetooth sensors, and those sensors give them inputs, whether it's a glucometer or a step tracker, or a scale to kind of give them an idea of where they are in their journey. And they're the first people who get to take a look at the readings on their sensors, and the sensors and the information coming in guide them down that path. If they're off a little bit, instructions come in to tell them what to do. It's also backed up by a care team that's full of clinicians and coaches to help people get over some of those humps as they manage their health. 
What we're finding is this is a dual problem we have to solve. In order to get people more engaged with their health, we have to make being healthy more engaging. And we've done that, and it's worked really, really well. And I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Jenkins now to kind of give you some of the stories behind how this has really impacted not only the people who are on our platform, but the health system itself and how it is reimagining how it will reinteract with people in the future. Take That's it great. away, John. Hey, thanks, Jean. So, um, truth be told, I'm a recovering internist. So those of you who have uh, any six or I've heard a lot of coughs out there, but unfortunately I'm not licensed in this state, so you just have to use some Mucinex. So anyway, those of you who are around my age may remember AAA triptychs. Do you remember those? They were really cool. They were maps that folded out, and they showed you how to get from one place to the other, all the stops along the way, all the rest areas, the gas stations, the points of interest. They were really great. They were wonderful. But when it got to the point where there was a sign that said road closed, the triptych could no longer help because the triptych was not real time, and the triptych did not interact with you in a digital way. Healthcare, my practice of medicine, has been hampered by the fact that my experience with each of you as a consumer has been in 15-minute segments. That's what it's been like. You schedule a visit with me, you come in, we have a chance to talk. I spend average about eight minutes face-to-face -face with you. We come up with a plan. I print out that plan at the end of the visit. I hand it to you and say, good luck. See you in six months or a year. And that's been the health system that I grew up in. That's been the health system which has been treating you. That is a health system that needs to be turned on its end. We need ways to turn actions that our patients, our customers do, into accountability about their health that results in activation which changes outcomes. One of the stories I want to tell you, and results are key, is the idea of how we get patients to understand. So in this case, one of our patients, Mary, had really been doing really well, but all of a sudden her blood glucose has went up to 160, 170, 180, and suddenly she wasn't feeling as well as she should. Her team detected that, contacted Mary, and said, Mary, what's up? Mary said, I'm monitoring exactly the way I should. I'm taking my blood glucoses, I'm weighing in, I'm taking all my steps, but I don't understand what's happening. And so the health coach interacted with them and said, Mary, what did you eat last night? Mary said, well, my grandchild has been staying with me and the only thing she'll eat is pizza. So what Mary didn't realize and what the health coach was able to, to help her to realize is that those fats and carbohydrates in the pizza slice were continually elevating her blood sugars and causing her to go on a different path. So they had a conversation around food that both her grandchild and her could eat that would make both of them happy and keep Mary aligned in her diabetes. And that's what this kind of engagement allows us to offer the guidance, which then lets Mary make right choices going forward. One of our uh, about 36-year-old nurses who was on the program lost 30 pounds very early in the program, went to the cafeteria and ordered what he normally ordered, which was a Salisbury steak, mashed potatoes with gravy, and some candied carrots. He sat down at the table. He couldn't eat it. He took a picture of that meal and actually sent it to his health coach and said, I know that this isn't, hasn't got me to my 30-pound weight loss. This hasn't got me to my better control of diabetes and my improved A1C. And then he said, I want to eat healthy. I now understand why. And that's critical to be able to have that kind of learning and have a digital platform that engages people, keeps them on the platform, so that we in our trial over the last year, 90% of our participants have stayed on the platform. That is incredible. They've been engaged by the platform, allowing us to coach them, allowing them to get the knowledge to actually change the course of their diabetes. I hate to say it, but the guys who are sitting here, they had a wonderful device for peripheral neuropathy. If I do my job right, I'm going to decrease their customer base mm -hmm. because that's what I need to do. Last but not least, oops, I'm going to go back one real quickly, tell you a quick story about a patient who uh, joined our platform inadvertently. 
He was a traveling salesperson. There may be a couple of you out there. And he had had chest pains for three nights in a row. He told his wife about it. His wife said, come home immediately, go to the urgent care. Went to the urgent care, the urgent care saw him, did some blood work, did an EKG. The doc came in and said, I've got good news for you and I've got some bad news. The good news is I looked at your EKG, there's no changes on your EKG, you're not having a heart attack. The bad news is your blood work shows you're a diabetic and you're hypertensive. I'm sending you to the ER right now because you're a high risk patient, you're gonna to have to be admitted. So he's admitted to the, through the emergency room to our hospital, two days later discharged on a boatload of new medications scared to death, didn't know what to do. Fortunately, we were enrolling people in our trial, and Gene and I were on campus, and enrolling people on our employee trial for independence for Wellsmith. He'd received the email, but he didn't think it applied to him because he wasn't a diabetic. Well, he soon asked to go on the program, was one of our star, star pupils, did everything we asked him to do, was exercising, following his diet, taking his medications, but he wasn't feeling good. And what the care team, the health coaching team saw was that the blood glucoses were going down, 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 down because he was, he was doing too good. So they were able to detect that, contact his doctor and say, we have this data from the peripheral devices that are linked through Wellsmith. We can print a report out to you, show you that this patient needs to have the medications adjusted. Are you interested? The doctor said, yeah, maybe a little differently. And so when the patient came in, he got his medicines adjusted, and then the doctor had the confidence to know that Wellsmith could continue to monitor that patient to see the effect of those medications. In our clinical trials, almost 9% of our patients have had significant medication reduction. One in nine is, actually, is the actual statistic. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty remarkable in healthcare. So what am I about with Wellsmith? I'm about with Wellsmith of using technology to do what we couldn't do, which is to be right there with you. That's our brand promise for our health system. And the only way we're going to do that is to make a connection in your mind between health and well-being. What are the steps you have to do to become well? If not, then we're going to have to have a lot more implantable defibrillators. We're going to have to have a lot more implantable chronic pain devices. We're going to have to have tertiary care centers, hospitals at home, all those sorts of things utilizing technology. I would rather let's utilize technology in prevention and population health and let's change the course of healthcare would be what I would like us to see. Thanks. So to, to close out, and Dr. Jenkins talked a little bit about some of the stats that we have about the, the longevity of people on the platform. We're completing, as of the end of uh, 2018, a year-long longitudinal study of a large cohort of people with diabetes compared to a match cohort of folks in the same profile who aren't on this platform. We expect that we'll be able to publish those results in the next mm -hmm. quarter. Um, to show that, but at the other end of the time, we're looking at, again, what are we trying to accomplish as human beings? We don't like to wake up in the morning feeling bad, but we need help. We need help getting through some of those loops and hoops of trying to navigate health along with everything else that we're in charge of, our families, taking care of our parents, taking care of our kids, doing all these things, and if we can make it simple enough, people are really capable of managing our own health. And so as, as a company, what our mission has been is to help slow down and eventually reverse the trend of poor health in this country by making it simple enough for people to manage their health. And we're doing that again, simply by making the experience of your health more engaging so that we have fun conversations with Dr. Jenkins when we do get to see him every once in a while and we're not just frustrated as heck by the experience of healthcare now, which is standing in line, sitting in one of those lovely rooms with that beautiful piece of paper on that little chair. We can, we can avoid all of that by making these interactions digital and it, it fits with the rest of our life. And what we're seeing again is 32 minutes a week, people thinking and managing their health inside of our app. But that's also hiding the fact that they're out running or walking or doing more exercise or changing how they eat. So we're really excited about what people are saying about Wellsmith who are on our platform and we're excited to be here and talk to you about it. It's a mission that we believe in. We know that empowering people is the actual key to solving our problems in health. And we're excited about inviting healthcare systems and groups to join with us on this journey of population health and prevention.
right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.